Body parts custom made from a patient's own skin cells could be printed by Melbourne, as in a printer, by Melbourne doctors within three years to save lives and revolutionise surgery. We need to get the uh, get this explained for to us. Professor Mark Cook is Director of Neurosciences at St Vincent's Hospital and the University of Melbourne. Professor, good morning to you. Good morning, John. Uh, here's, uh, is this my understanding? Tell me, give me a mark out of ten. John Byrne sitting opposite me needs a new nose. So right. you scrape some skin cells, say, off his tuck shop arms, grow, put those cells, grow some more, and then put it in this 3D printer, which will print him a new nose. That's exactly right. So probably the best way to think of these is like giant bubble jet printers, where instead of putting in uh, ink for printing, you can put in these new materials, which will grow tissues successfully. You can then coat them in the patient's own cells and grow customised body parts. That is absolutely incredible. Um, what, is the, what, what is the most useful thing, if it all works perfectly, what would be the most useful thing that you could print from your printer? Probably at the moment the most useful thing will be pieces of people's joints and bones. These are very hard to do on the spot at the moment, obviously. If you could take them out of people and reconstruct new ones on the spot almost, then this would be a huge advantage. What about the spinal cord? Well, the spinal cord's a much more tricky problem, but down the track, that's the sort of problem that we need to be dealing with. So it sounds terribly science fiction, but uh, I think a colleague of yours, Professor Gordon Wood, I think his name is, is quoted in the Herald Sun this morning as saying it's the verge, it's the verge of a medical revolution. I think that's right. There have been huge advances in these technologies, particularly the materials technologies over the last few years, and the scale at which these can be structured now is very, very tiny, so nano surfaces can be made that have special properties that let these sort of structures be integrated into the body. What does this do, for example, to the burgeoning uh, industry in knee replacement, hip replacement, which is currently taking place? Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, that's going to be a big target for these sorts of technologies. You can imagine that people could have these custom built by surgeons on the spot as they're doing the procedures eventually. This is fairly, uh, fairly unbelievable. Com- unbelievable. Uh, the advances that you've made, uh, your t- I assume team, team professor, uh, your advances are on the cell side or the printer side? Well, our, so- our advances are on both. So we work very closely with the material scientists from Wollongong and the University of Melbourne to make these structures that will allow us to put the cells together with the materials. So it's a real team effort. Um, how long does it take you to... Because I assume that if John Burns needs a new nose, you don't take a nose worth of cells from his body elsewhere. You take a much smaller group of cells. How long does it take the cells that you take to become nose size? It can take days or weeks to grow enough cells to coat one of these surfaces. Often we're not trying to grow the whole structure again, but just to coat one that the body can then integrate and cover itself later. Right. Can, can you also do it with hair? Unfortunately, not here. Oh, I, oh, I knew there was a downside to this. <laughs> uh, as a Hawthorne supporter, could I ask my question now? Are you able to do it with hamstrings? Look, certainly muscles are something that we're exploring at the muscle moment, and we've been growing muscles for some time now on these fabrics and scaffolds of material so that we do hope to be able to insert muscles back into people in the not-too-distant future. Hey, uh, thanks for being available and for explaining it in, in such forthright terms. It is fascinating stuff. I don't suppose there's a website uh, yet. There isn't at the moment, but there will be very shortly, and we'll certainly send the details along to you. Professor, we thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Oh, how's that? I knew it wasn't all perfect. Professor Mark Cook, Director of Neurosciences at St Vincent's Hospital and University of Melbourne. If, if We're they, going to be a doctor and order a new organ. If they were able to create hair, mm. can you imagine how much money they'd have to be able to fund really important medical research? Oh, fair dinkum, eh? Eh? No worry there's about, a photo no, of, about $12 billion black holes. There's a photo in the paper this morning I want to discuss with you later under the heading Rugwatch. Watch.